cartel can make um, the young men want to wear clocks how can he not make them want to so if it is that it is done a plan has core values a plan has clearly defined outcomes a plan has accountability and a plan has key performance indices i repeat for the use of the house that the jamaica labor party government has no plan they have a document Hey peeps, it's your girl Blessed D. Gazativa and welcome back to the Blessed D. Gazativa channel. I hope that you guys are having a happy Sunday as I am having and you're having a good, nice, relaxing day with family and friends. Now people, what I wanted to talk about today is a riveting, enthralling interview that I watched last night on On Stage with Damien Crawford. Now I have the Total, I have total admiration for this man. Whether it's PNP or JLP, any politician that has their brain screwed on, I have admiration for them or just any individual for that matter of fact. So anyway, when we get back, listen to what Damien Crawford, some of the things that Damien Crawford, that I call Nuggets, had to say about the entertainment industry, the government, Vibes Cartel, and Bounty Killer. When we get back, we're going to look into it. We're going to talk about it. Let's kick it. You're not like anyone else You find the way you are Did you do this all yourself? A smile ignites the room Sinia up to the time, you know it's called Tell Representing for Blessed D, Gaza Diva So in a nutshell, Damien Crawford took to on stage last night And as I said before, it was a captivating interview One with intelligent thought-provoking elements, a lot of recommendations about what the government can do about the entertainment industry, and it was all saturated with the artists who influences society, and of course, Vibes Cartel Bontekiller's name was laced in the discussion. Now, he started off the discussion with asking questions about the entertainment industry and the grant that the government said that they were going to give to people recently. Of course, Damian Crawford's response to that was, the government was had his back against the wall. He was in parliament talking. He tried to blame entertainment for whatever was happening in society. And he didn't have a plan. He didn't have a strategy. When the entertainment industry came down on him, he handed them a carrot. People tell me now down below in the comment section if that is what you detected. Because that's exactly what I detected. When the entire entertainment industry, the Spraga Benzies, the Vibes Cartel, the Bounty Killer, the Baby Sham came down on Andrew Holness about his statement right after Kenise's demise, you heard the government go into office and say that he had a grant for the entertainment industry long for those of you who don't want to watch a long interview it was about 20 odd minutes or so the interview with winford and i think it was very good people you need to click on on stage now and go and watch it so you can get a full interview for yourself as i said i'm just going to give you the nuggets from my point of view no, back to what I was saying now. So I thought he was handing them a carrot as well. He blamed the industry. They came down on him and boom, he handed them a carrot to say, we're going to give back to the entertainment industry. We're going to give to you. Then Damian Crawford broke it down in a lot of ways. What's going to happen to the girl who used to do the promotion? What's going to happen to the people who did lighting? What was going to, what's going to happen to the jerk chicken man and all of those? How are you going to take into account or care for all of those people? Giving credence to the fact, as he said earlier before, that it wasn't properly thought out and it was a carrot that the government was handing to the public. Anyway, now fast forward, he then transitioned into the history and the readings of the whole entertainment industry. And he had this to say about cartoons, which I found very hilarious, but factual. One of the most popular cartoons are the biggest guns. So he went on to say, okay, in the cartoons, you have some of the biggest guns. And this is coming up in the minds of our youngsters, not even teens. They're younger children who watch these ca cartoons. So what you're trying to say, the cartoons don't have an influence over this. He also spoke to Rambo and said that he watches Rambo and they don't influence him. One of the things that he said that I thought was very telling at least to me and that i could relate to vibes cartel's gun lyrics or his gun songs are my favorite songs anybody who has been following me for more than four or five years know that i've always said this vibes cartel gun lyrics 
are the most captivating to me. And for the same reason that Damian Crawford is going to state that they're captivating to Other him. Other persons like myself who listen it and gravitate towards it, maybe gravitating towards the metaphors. So as Damian Crawford says, he's not a murderer. I am not a murderer, but yet still we are drawn to this music. Why? Because our intent is intellectual and we understand that this artist is highly intellectual and we are just listening to catch the nuggets again to say, all right then, what vibes cartel are going to say to this to counter that? What vibes cartel is going to say to this? And we bet I'm going to have some metaphoric alignment and he's going to have some great similes associated with it. And you will never be disappointed if that's what you're looking for in any form of vibes cartel music whether it's the socio-economic ones or just the gal tunes or the ones as we call them the gun tunes you're always going to find that in vibes cartel's music but he also spoke to the point of criminals and that is what i've been trying to say to people for a very long time persons who have criminal intent will listen to the music to gain their criminal intent and advance their criminal intentions it's as simple as that criminal minded people who listen to this music will listen to it to advance their criminal intent no differently than i who listen to the music for metaphoric alignment similes and how vibes cartel has his words play because i couldn't listen to a movado song to hear word play it's because i don't expect that if i'm listening to a movada song i'm probably listening for some melodies but i'm not going to be listening to movada song for no great metaphor like buju banton says vibes cartel stimulates his heavens i am not going to be listening to that song so that is just as clear as i can put it so criminal persons may gravitate to violent music but it's because they are criminal in their intent then damian crawford went on to speak to the whole association right after Canisi's death and what the government had to say. He basically said, how can the government just forward out and say something like that, especially in a time when the entertainment industry is in a lull, they're not making any money, but yet still you're blaming an industry. He also gave some very, very critical points when he said, the government looks for easy things to blame. And right now, the entertainment industry is easy to blame. And he also spoke to another mental psychological thing that i've seen the governments do over and over again and you notice i say governments whether jlp pnp seems that story a play so what the government typically tends to do they come out and they blame something and if they blame something they will then re-engineer the psyche of the people through the media to say okay this thing is bad we can't see why they're not supporting or advancing it Back to the state of entertainment and Damian Crawford's statement. The government has looked at entertainment now and said, yes, it's responsible for crime. It's responsible for violence against women. There is no evidence out there to prove that entertainment has driven up or caused a surge in violence against women. For one, the entertainer, like I've said in many other videos that I've made, entertainment has been one of the most anti violence against women music apart from the little rugrats that are running out and singing all kind of trash about battery women and all of that crap i can never pinpoint an entertainer that has said you need to go and blah blah blank a woman you may not agree with it but it takes me to the other point that damian crawford is going to make where he says that a lot of people are going to be listening this to this to say blah 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 and ray tay tay and yes you idiot you chat too much god this arise crime and this is exactly what and when he spoke about vibes cartel and bounty killer let's take a listen including the prime minister true cartel is wearing class but i don't think cartel has influence has carried him to, to want to be a part of criminal activity mm -hmm. So he's right again. So the prime minister is wearing Clarks because Vibes Cartel has sensationalized Clarks. And to get into the psyche of the youth, which Andrew Holness mastered specifically by wearing those Clarks, climbing on top of the van and doing all of that shenanigan, he knew what he was doing. He took that mainstay or that so-called influence of dancehall and said, all right, let me rock with it. So to Damian Crawford's point, again, listen. Vegas asked me when I called him to say, if cartel can make um, the young men want to wear clocks, how can he not make them want to, to fire a gun? But, but the, the, the research shows in a, in a book called Shiftman that influence can end at a particular level. So a friend might tell me what to drink, but him can't tell me what to do. 
So if he is not taking up the criminal elements of the other things that have been said by the entertainer, why him take up Clark's? Because he was using it to further his agenda, which goes back to the point that Bounty Killer and my artist, Vibes Cartel, and other artists have been saying over the years, the government will use music and entertainment as a whole to charter their course, course and drive home their message that they want to send. And when they're done with it, they discard of it. Anyway, as I said, it's a good 30 minute almost watch for me. I enjoyed it from the start to the finish, how he spoke eloquently, how he gave advice to the government. And and of course, telling the government to tackle education, which has to be the prime issue of everything. Anyway, as I say, go over there and watch it. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit the notification bell. And if you've not yet smashed the like button on this video, smash the like button and send this out. I'm out.